Gordon? Here. Mr. Frazier? Here. Mr. Bertiazzi? Here. Um, Mr. Seiler, Mr. Douglas, Mr. Seymour. Mr.
throw a few words out here. We've got some time. Um, there oh, actually is behind this top sheet, uh, there's information on the second page. It talks about uh, the bond issue that was, uh, th these were bonds that were issued in 2003. In 2003, we sold $4.9 million worth of bonds. It was uh, used primarily for, I believe, the, uh, the construction, uh, reconstruction of the firehouse at Beach Road and Nine Mile. And uh, those were 20 year bonds that were issued. Started with a rate of 2.5 going up eventually to 4.5%. Oh. So now we're able to, the concern that we had was that we didn't want to have to go to the bond rating agencies at this point in our financial picture and asking them to review our rating. We'd rather not have to go through the whole rigmarole, especially the interest rate market right now is very, very attractive. Interest rates are very, very low, practically all time lows. So we want to take advantage of that and uh, lock in the rates to be able to keep it low all the way through for the remainder of time of the, of the loan. So instead what we're able to do is go directly with the financial banks. Uh, we, we put it out as an RFP. We let the banks <coughs> on, on the uh, on the notes. On, on the, right now we have about three and a half million dollars remaining. And so that will be uh, up for bid by them. And right now early numbers that we got was that it's going to be about 2.1 percent interest rate that we'll be able to get for the remainder of time of the bonds. That will give us a savings of about $277,000. Um, so that should be uh, very nice and uh, without having to have all the expenses and headaches of uh, going through the ratings and official statements and everything like that that goes along with it. So that's, that's pretty much everything in a nutshell. We'll have uh, financial advisors and, <coughs> and uh, Mike McGee, uh, our uh, uh, outside legal counsel on bond issues will be at the meeting and uh, if all is uh, well at the finance committee we'll be bringing this forward. Um, the reason we wanted to spend some time right now on it to at least familiarize the mayor and council uh, on this issue is we think if we can get it done we'd like to put it on the 25th and it ties in the budget uh, rather well, number one. Number two, Especially also the gap of time between the 25th meeting and the following meeting after that would be over a month later. And so we want to not miss an opportunity because over the last two months we were able to see an additional savings of about $100,000. So the time that I first looked at this uh, with uh, the consultants, uh, so now we were able to pick up an additional $100,000 worth of savings approximately because of the, the change in interest rates in the marketplace. So this is definitely uh, an optimum time for us. And uh, the idea is that this way it will be a fair process, it will be an RFP, there won't be any favorites selected or anything like that, and everyone has an opportunity to bid on it. And uh, this, is as this is a vehicle that we could use to finance as long as we finance under $10 million over the course of a year. It's called a bank qualified um, uh, rate. That we're able to I have. know most of the uh, seminars that, uh, on, on debt administration they tell you private placements, but usually it's the big cities that do it, larger cities mm -hmm. uh, than us. Uh, but uh, we, I like the concept a lot, it's a streamline. They have to go through the torturous procedures you have to go through uh, to, in essence, uh, do a total reissue. Uh, if, there's a, if there's a more uh, economical way to do it, so I think we should definitely explore it. Um, Personal property, I'd like to draw your attention to the starting of the second page of the handout. It's information from <coughs> the Michigan Municipal League as to what's been going on. Uh, Eric, you can help me out here too sure. because we talked through this, but let me, let me start with um, basically the emphasis is now more on industrial. There is at least a, 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 a semi guarantee of reimbursement although nobody says it's fault, and the, the source is still this vague uh, uh, credits that go away on business. A actually, th that, that's the major change. I have a couple of things. First of all, as far as the personal property tax, uh, th there was a major campaign by Michigan Municipal League. I went up with uh, Jim Charette to, to Lansing uh, to help with the initial people with the campaign. Uh, it was re uh, replaced donor rates was the theme of the, of the, of the, of, of, of the slogan that they teamed up and formed a coalition of different uh, organizations. The goal was 
we wanted to make sure that this personal property tax, which many of us rely on for a good sizable portion of our revenues, is consistent and it's still going to be there. And if we want to make changes to it, how are we going to be able to survive? We want to make sure that it's not just the problem was initially, it was relying on expiring business credits, business tax credits. That was going to be the source of some type of reimbursement. That's not going to be around for the long term. These expiring business credits are going to expire. And so that's the nature that's right there in the word, expiring. So what we wanted to make sure, that then what the Michigan Municipal League was able to get passed in, in the final bill that passed the Senate was a, a poison pill, it's called, so an expression, which means that if there isn't funds in the budget from Lansing to replace the funds to <coughs> the municipalities, then the personal property tax doesn't get eliminated that year. There's a protection for us. And as we don't have to rely on the business tax credits expiring that they're going to be the funding source. Instead, this cannot get approved. There won't be a cut in a year that they don't have this approved in the budget for us. So that's our own protection. And uh, there were many people upset about it, but it passed in the Senate. The House is not taking it up until probably lame duck. That's what they're going to uh, Right now, officially, from the people I spoke to at the House, they said, um, we're holding off on it. And uh, that, that, that's, I'm going to get an update uh, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, we'll more accurate than what's going on over there. So that, that's pretty much. We have peace of mind knowing that there is some type of uh, protection for us. The other piece of it is the emphasis on industrial versus personal. Uh, the problems are the $750,000 I've been talking about, 13, 14, is going to happen, and nobody's given any relief on that. That's the elimination of personal property for all entities, uh, whether industrial uh, or commercial, uh, for uh, any prop personal property under 80,000, uh, 40,000 40, taxable, 80,000 mar uh, actual market value. Uh, that does eliminate a lot of the small businesses uh, from the mix. and. Uh, for small businesses, the, 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 it's pretty much agreed that the personal property tax is uh, all the way from its misnomer to its functionality. It's rather uh, irritating to business. Uh, however, uh, it's, it's <coughs> very irritating to us to think about losing 50% of our taxable value. So we just have to keep monitoring this and pushing on it. Uh, but it's, better, it's in better shape than it was. Long term, though. A <coughs> um, couple of other things that have come up. Uh, we just received, and this is only page one, the next page in your house. Find out there's Oakland County Treasure on it. Uh, I did, did want to burn a tree, uh, especially before we actually took a look at it. This is going to be in the fund finance agenda, too. Uh, hopefully, we can bring it up so we can maybe get through the bond, bond materials first. Uh, this is one of 27 pages, and Fred and I talked about it today, and he said it's a scary list, uh, the largest he can recall. And um, uh, to put it into perspective, though, I had a discussion with the Oakland County Treasurer's Office and the person who specializes in this area, and uh, one of the, our list went up by about 30 percent compared to the previous year. So I said, uh, they told me that they changed the procedure in terms of the way they're acting with the foreclosures, that they used to have to go chasing after um, everyone and any location that they have, whatever it might be. Now, they, at least they do the, the, the name and address on record, and that's, that's where they're, they're required to stop, and that's, uh, that's what they're doing. Overall, county-wide, it went up at 50%. So relatively speaking, 30% is considered, uh, we're on the lower end of the increase of the county. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's part of the perspective to put it in, but uh, these are these are properties that have uh, they could be vacant land, they could be um, th different types of situations, burnt out buildings, whatever could, uh, that have had um, major uh, demolition work, whatever it might be. But uh, we have the opportunity to purchase these properties from the county for the taxes owed on it, and so it's a pretty it's a very intensive list. They originally, in this letter, gives us, uh, gives us a deadline of June 20th, which is this Wednesday. They just mailed us this letter, and it uh, doesn't leave much time at all. Uh, so we were able to get an extension of time until uh, next month, through, through the next month, to be able to do this. And they said as long as we give them 
some sense of uh, commitment of what, in, what properties we are interested in, we can get the official um, vote from the council by the end of next month if, if there are any particular properties that we do want to take on. You know, these are properties that taxes haven't been paid for two years, and the starting bid is the tax itself. Correct. And we get first crack at it. So we, we, we don't have to go through a bidding process. We, and, and then if we decide to take a pass this first round, it goes to the auction, and then the auction is the opening bid if the, if the tax is owed. They could bid it up from there. If they don't get the opening bid, it goes back to the, count, to the county treasurer's office. It goes to a second auction, which uh, happens in October. Before that second auction, we get a second chance to buy these properties again. So if we don't want to hold on to these properties, if, we, if we're not interested in it, we can let the market take its course and, um, and let, let them bid on it. If we don't take it after the second, if, if the second auction doesn't get the required opening bid that they're looking for at that at that time, <coughs> we get the property for free, actually. If, so if we want. If, if we, we want. want. Why would we bid on these properties? If there's, if there's a reason that we want to have it for either an extension of a park or different strategic or right reasons. Or right away. Right away. For, for we, but we, uh, we, that's seldom if ever. We, we don't historically take no. on, but, but it's just no. to make council aware of the amount of properties that are up for auction and uh, people are interested in purchasing properties, there will be an opportunity to, uh, to buy properties that are I, I have a question. Some of there are some homes in the city that did have fire damage. If no one buys it, would it be incumbent upon us as a city to buy it and demo it? Because we don't want it sitting there. Many of the times we do actually do demo, and then we put the, we roll the bill to demo onto the tax bill. Right. And that's how we're, we we typically do take action. We don't necessarily wait to take ownership of the place if it's a if it's a hazard to the area or if it's a uh, reason of concern. We will take action even without owning the property. Does the money come from the organization, or where exactly is the fund allocated? If any of the funds. That is one of. I mean, we have to evaluate if, uh, if there's a residential property that neighborhood civilization wants to take on, possibly. Then that that's something which they have to they have a separate board that has to decide. But uh, basically, it would depend on the purpose. Right. Uh, like, like, let's say it's for right of way, come out of road funds. Okay. Uh, if it was for parks, come out of parks. And so at least we take a look at the list. Normally, we there's nothing on here that. But I'm not sure on Mayor's question if we really have all the answers on the ground. I mean, that's the building department. Well, we go through the building department and we go through the court process. And, and what will ultimately happen is we will raise it and put the put the cost against the against the tax bill. Is there one Yeah, the, we, you know, that's pretty regular. Uh, there was one on this list that way. Right. We, we would want to possibly acquire it just to take get it down. <coughs> That or you know, in particular, look in the fall when we get them, we get those places for free. Then nobody picks them up on the tax sale. I mean, you, you have to so see how. So the second then we get it for free. Do you, you, you so tell, we, tell about the bill that we're here, or the item we want to put on the agenda a little bit? Couple of weeks. Well, we, we are working on the Fire Withholding Act. Uh, Chief Rowley just went through, I think we have 12, 13 fires that have happened this year. Basically, the council adopts a resolution. Uh, any, any, before any insurance proceeds are released, uh, they have to put money on file in an escrow account in the city to pay for the demolition. And we've gone through just the fires this year and kind of took a snapshot. That item should move forward in the next month. Um, on this, Jim, this afternoon, met with uh, Kerry Cummingford, uh, community development. We're going through, we've got the water department looking to see arrears water on these properties. Are there any ship loans? Any recorded interest the city may have? We're going through. I'm on real pleased list. to hear on about, on, yes, real pleased to hear about the extension of time because that's the largest list I've seen in. Um, in, in, in my three years here. That's twice, two, three times last year's. I, I kind of question the 30% increase, sir. I mean, that's a, a big, that list is huge. And we last year, I think we only had 11 or 12. We're going to sit down with planning, but more time helps out. Um, you know, are they rentals? We've got a whole list. We're going to run them through a matrix and just see. And some of these homes may be occupied, too. That's the other thing, is we 
uh, two years ago we got Lois Lane, yeah. and we had to deal with an eviction. We and did. But remember, that was after the two sales had passed. This is preliminary. Some right. of these yeah. probably will sell at one right. of the two sales yeah. in the fall. But even then, it would be hoot us to know which ones sure. are auto, which ones still have folk living in sure. them, because those evictions they're, could they're very on. well land in front of you folks. Um, Do we have any commercial property? Uh, yes, there's some. Yeah. Well, and, and the last time there was a property on 12 Mile, which we had a lien for demolition, a commercial property, which we now own that vacant piece of property uh, well, on 12 Mile, uh, two-story building that burnt down right. in uh, December of 09. Mm -hmm. well, our goal is not really to be landlords and to be owners of these properties, so because A, it takes, a, it takes it off the tax rolls, and B, and the, the, we have to maintain these properties as well. So that's why at any time we don't have, unless it's really something that we are going to benefit from in a substantial way, we typically let let the market take its uh, course and hopefully find good good people to buy these properties. By way, by the way, for all those present, the condos have officially sold. <laughs> yeah. Everything's everything's in order. Uh, last but not least, yeah. uh, uh, when we're talking about these burned houses and we may uh, demolition <coughs> have them demolished. I'm concerned because we have a, a limited amount of flexibility in our, in our finances and when we have it demolished, we have to pay the contractor for demolishing it, but we roll that cost onto the taxes. That stays there until the property is sold, which means we're given a, like a no interest or loan to mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. to, with limited mm -hmm. flexibility in our funding, so we have to be real careful what we <coughs> select, otherwise uh, we can find ourselves spending all the all of our money and then something else comes up we don't have it. We, so right now, we've never selected any of these yet. We have not selected any of these. No. 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 Mm -hmm. In the past? In the past. We've selected them after the two public sales, auction sales, we and it's then the opportunity for the city to get them for no, for no cost. We have selected some of those vacant properties. Vacant lots. Mostly vacant lots. lots. The exception was the lowest lane that was occupied. Well, we had some come before us before, the, the gifts from mm -hmm. the county. Mm -hmm. uh, what, but we didn't hear what happened to those gifts. I mean, did we assume them all? Is somebody supposed to look at the houses, and then there was this little square across right. the street in the Civic Center Drive that somebody found out didn't belong to anybody. <coughs> and whatever happened to that piece, we, we got it, I guess. You're talking about the last one? There was a little piece. Right, but I mean last fall. Four, four yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. All of those were vacant, and there was a decision, or at least a consensus by everybody that those were the ones we should go ahead and take. Residential structures, you know, we, we thought maybe we'd look at those more selectively because of the cost of maintenance yeah, and everything yeah. else. But the vacant ones that came through, and I think there were five, five or six of them last fall, those we, we did not object to, so we got deeds to all of those. So but there was one, there was one piece, as yeah, Dan said, there was one little piece about the size of this table mm -hmm. that, that didn't fall any place. It was yeah. behind the parking lot, behind the condos. Landlock. Yeah, it was something that needed to be rezoned, basically. It's to be um, re re parceled. Yeah, but what happened to the homes that we got free? There were no homes. No. They, they were, were all home, vacant. The home we got oh, vacant. They were all vacant. The only home we ever acquired was the lowest lane property with the house on it. That was, if there was somebody living in there, and we did go through a quiet fight election, and then we went through an eviction. And what's happened to the house? It's in the process of uh, being torn down, going through the... Um, the uh, bid process. Because I guess, you know, it's time we get, when we get your presentation, we get all these dots on their map, and, they, and the last time dots were increasing, and, and, and I don't know, we have a list of vacant homes, but how many does the city own? It's, uh, I'd like to really know, and how are we going to get rid of the properties the city owns? You got the neighborhood stabilization. There's only X amount of money, and out of that money is for different kinds of purposes. Like there's 150,000 for teardowns, if I recall, and there's 
Ryan Adams, who have how the money could be spent. So what are we doing? I'd like to have some idea of how we are handling city property, especially homes.
it, it got to the point where it didn't pay for them to maintain the entire sure. building for the amount of people that were right. remaining over there. Right. I have a question. So you've blown the whistle that says between 2012-2013 we're going to face this. What do we do? Sit here and wring our hands? And, or is there something that we can do to uh, prepare ourselves to, for the onslaught? One of the things we have done <coughs> reservation of funds for that, that we did because our you know that's what our appeals attorney said you know we're in the midst of it uh, and we, it's like two years yeah. we have set aside some dollars hopefully they be sufficient but um, that will be part of what we're going to be doing with the budget adjustment <coughs> bring some of them in the budget and then recommitting them after the close of this but I, I guess it's, to me, it's bigger than that. Do we go to the legislature? Do we go to our the lobbyists? Do we go to other communities and say, you may not know this, but this is coming on? And, you know, the Troys and, and the others that have significant numbers of, of commercial property and, and say, you know, we better hold hands and, and storm Lansing to well, tell them to make some decent decisions that keep us from going on. We started there. doing that, and, and, and the way we were analyzing the personal property, we I've done Farmington Hills, I've done Troy, they've taken big hits too. And uh, maybe we've got to get some of the other larger cities yeah. to have some more some more homework and try to get a coalition. Uh, I, I, told, I, told, I told Jim, I told Jim, and, and <coughs> I just threw it on the table, so we're one of three that still have proposal A. And there's some way that we've got to find a way, even if we have to go to court, find out why we are having to pay our tax money to to support other communities. Because that's actually <coughs> what the schools are doing. And and if you could get that back, I think what is it, can about nineteen mills the way that we had to prove to to um, that we lost when we went from eleven five to whatever it was six five hundred. Do you remember how much money had to be made up or how many mills? That was about nineteen mills.